Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video, and making this video, like in the process of it, I thought it was going to be a bit longer than I th that it ended up being, so yeah, welcome to what if James Polk served a second term. Granted, he died in 1849, like just weeks after he left, I think it was either weeks or days, I'm pretty sure it was weeks after he left the Oval Office. So, it, we would have to do one of the old things we used to do, and let's be unrealistic with this uh, what if, and that's say he lived longer than he actually did. Because we all know my biggest trouble with my what ifs is that A, they're unrealistic, and B, people somehow live longer than they do, just like with James Polk in this video. So, let's take a look at the first election and what he does. So, 1848, Polk is the one running against Zachary Taylor, not Lewis Cass, and Taylor's going to do a lot worse against Polk than he did against Cass, with Polk ending up beating him 180 to 110. He's winning re-election. I think this election would be kind of a lost cause for the Whigs in a big way. So, what does Polk do in a second term? Of course, like, we have to talk about the whole thing with Manifest Destiny. Of course, that would still be on his mind, as that was his thing. So, we would probably see more expansion with into the Oregon Territory, as well as territory that we receive from Mexico. Hell, the war might be pushed forward with a Polk second term if he feels like he can get more territory, like Chihuahua or Coahuila. Coahuila? I hope I'm pronouncing those names right. <laughs> when I looked at those names, I was like, man, I am not going to be able to pronounce these. So, probably you got two, maybe three more Mexican. Uh, territories under U.S. control. May they've probably become states by this point in time if Mexico hasn't gotten them back yet. Also, we probably see a lot of economic growth in a second term under Polk. This would be mostly due to via him using infrastructure, him building roads, canals. I don't believe the whole train system was him. I think it was Lincoln, actually. We would see trains, canals being built west, which would bring in more revenue, of course, boosting the economy under his second term. Uh, tariffs would have been reduced. Polk was very much against raising tariffs or just high tariffs in general. So I'd very much see him lowering tariffs in his second term. Of course, this is something that is actually extremely important, and that's our deteriorating relationship with Mexico. From here on forward, Mexico and the United States aren't going to be on great terms. They're going to be on even worse terms than they were in the original timeline. Hell, it's, it would be so bad that come World War I, Mexico probably just goes ahead and invades the United States, and which would cause the Roaring Twenties to never happen. So, But I do expect Harding and Coolidge to both be elected regardless. It'd be a lot more narrow, but just regardless, I feel like they'd both still be elected. Wilson probably would have had a lot more fire under him for not getting involved in the war since the U.S. would be invaded, so there's a chance Wilson would have lost, but at the same time, I think Wilson would still, you know, be president for a second term, mostly because, you know, presidents under a war typically, you know, get reelected, especially if said president got invaded under. So, and, you know, they actually declare war, which I think Wilson would do, hesitantly. Uh, so the Compromise of 1850, this is a big one. So Polk was very much pro-slavery. He was very much in the interests of the southern states. So the two new territories he got from Mexico, as well as Texas, those are probably going to end up being slave states. So we see the expansion of slavery under a Polk second term due to the Compromise of 1850. I assume more northern states would be made because that was the whole deal with Polk. For every slave state, he would make a free state. So we'd probably see, like, I don't know, California, maybe Washington, Oregon, Minnesota, something along those lines get put into as a new state. We also have the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. That still passes. Polk would sign that without hesitation. We head off to 1852, where we have Winfield Scott, the Whig general, defeating Franklin Pierce, the Democrat senator from New Hampshire, I believe. And Scott would actually win this election. It would kind of, it wouldn't be a referendum on Polk, more so Pierce. It was one of those elections where it was going to be the opposite party that was going to win from the incumbent party. And in this timeline, Scott just so happens to be that lucky one, as it was very close uh, in every single metric. Scott becoming the 12th president of the United States. So what happens in Scott's term? Honestly, not much. He's a Whig by he is a Whig, so he pretty much just the Whigs believe that 
the president is just a figurehead, shouldn't really get much involved with Congress, so he just signs whatever comes to his desk. And I imagine Scott would do that very much so. However, he would have to deal with a yellow fever epidemic. Um, he probably might handle that a bit worse than Pierce if Congress doesn't know how to ha doesn't know how to maneuver in time. Of course, the Kansas-Nebraska Act probably still passes. Of course, we probably see something along the lines of maybe Kansas is a slave state, Nebraska is a free state. Bleeding Kansas would be a lot more detriment, I would assume, since, you know, the expansion of slavery happened, and so this whole Nebraska-Kansas situation needs to be figured out with pronto. And so whatever is brought up to Scott, he signs, no hesitation. Of course, there would be several minor wars against the natives. Of course, the Third Seminole War, the biggest one. Scott would probably handle these a lot better than Pierce did. Pierce didn't handle them bad. I'm pretty sure he won every single war. It's just it, ha it took too long. I mean, granted, they were short wars, but still, for, like, Scott, I'm just going to say this. Scott would handle it a lot better. We would have been in the war and out of it a lot quicker, maybe by, like, a month or so, right? The Third Seminole War was still going on, would still be going on by the time we hit the next election. And this is when things starting to flow back into the original timeline. Like I said, like, realistically, based off of this unrealism that I'm sh spouting off, things really, really don't change that much. The biggest thing is that the Whig Party is still a somewhat predominant party due to Winfield Scott when the Republicans run a major candidate nationwide, and that's John Fremont. However, Fremont doesn't get second place. He gets third due to Scott being an incumbent. And, of course, Buchanan is still elected president, this time the 13th president, defeating both Scott and Fremont due to the vote splitting. And, of course, we still see that James Buchanan is still one of the worst presidents in the country. He divides the country even more. And, you know, he also might have been the first gay president. People have talked about that. Do some research. It's actually quite interesting. And then we head on into 1860, excuse me, where instead of the Constitutional Union Party, the Whig Party is the one who ends up being this whole, hey, can we not fight and keep the country together? And they nominate John Bell. Lincoln would still win this massive four-way race that ended up determining everything. Civil War goes down and the like. But, so yeah, like, if you're disappointed, sorry. It, this really, like, the Civil War was very, like, inevitable. And I don't, and with this timeline specifically, of course, the South would have a lot more ammunition. <laughs> thanks to James K. Polk and the expansion of slavery, but Lincoln would still end up winning. It, now, granted, like, I doubt any other state would be made outside of maybe Washington, and that would just go to Lincoln anyway. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is the Chaotic One saying, peace.